Hello again. I'm going in this short session just to outline for you the Ethics Advisory Group application form. There is a specific form for studies of existing records or already collected data, a second one for studies on human participants directly. I'm only going to discuss the existing record form. The other can be found on the web. The first page is just a, a, in the form of an instruction. Um, what studies should be um, applied for to this group, uh, where the uh, union or staff members are involved as intended co-authors, principal investigators, named collaborators, sponsors or funders. The second little bit is what needs to be completed and what we expect to see. Um, in the event of protocol, protocol modification, uh, we need, uh, there's another little form that we need to know what the modifications are. And just to remind you that the final study report needs to be sent within 90 days of the end of the study. So page one is just for, for reading and noting. The next two pages are details about the study, uh, the sort of administrative details. The title, where the study will take place, the name of the PI, who she, he is, where employed, address, email address, the union person who's involved, because if the union is not involved then this group won't need to see this application, uh, the address and email of that person. Research partners should be listed, the source of funds and any conditions attached to the funding must be specified. By the way, all these blocks, if you double click on them, you're able to write in them. So it's, it's useful for you and for the reviewers to, to see things in the blocks. Any potential conflict of interest, sorry, um, and explanation on that. And then the signatures of the principal investigator, the head of the institution with the name and position and the union staff member. Then study detail, the aims and objectives. And these could be cut and paste from the protocol and should be listed. Then the scientific justification. Explain briefly why this study is being done. Um, the expected benefits for participants and the local populations. Then a section on data collection. What is the source of the data? Who will collect it? Where will this be done? What sampling process? We don't want all the formulas, we just want a very brief outline of the sampling methods, the expected number of records. Next section on the local ethics committee. Who are they? And please give us the name of the local chairperson or secretary, as sometimes we follow these up. And whether application has already been made, um, if it's and and the the proof of approval, if you're still waiting for approval, or if no application has been made, and an explanation for that, if no application has been made. Confidentiality. Will names be collected? Yes, no. Uh, and if they will, explain how, this, how those names will be maintained. If names are not collected, as we were saying, in certain instances there may be ways that people can be identified even though their names are not collected. And explanation of how confidentiality will be maintained for each of, of those uh, categories. Where will the data be stored? Who will access that data? Who will have access? Um, will there be confidentiality agreements? If not, why? And then a section on communication of the study results. 
who will the results be made available to? And then a specific question, how will communities whose data has been studied be informed about the results? And finally, who will be included as co-authors of the papers? And that's it. So good luck with completing the forms. In the case of difficulty, the chairperson of the ethics group is always available to help or to advise. Thank you.